Serious, what dark family secret were you let in on, once you were old enough? My uncle didn't die in a car accident. He killed his mistress and then killed himself by crashing his car with her body in the trunk. Dude, here's a family story I refer to as, the accident. For years my older sister's bio dad, died in an accident when she was 8. She didn't find out, until she was a teenager, that it wasn't a car accident. It was a, painted the ceiling with his brain accident. Anyway, fast forward 30 some years, and my sister deals with a f load of mental issues, and is constantly treating her children poorly. It's Easter Sunday, and our younger sister, is introducing her boyfriend to our family, and it's his first meal with us. Think modern Norman Rockwell style, all out meal, but with a bunch of kids and family. But my older sister won't stop yelling at her kids. My dad, who has been her only active father, finally snaps and tells her to knock it off. She, a 40 something year old woman, pulls the, you're not my dad line, like a shitty teenager. That man goes from calm to red, stood up, veins bulging from his head and absolutely screams. Yeah, your effing child mole dad, blew his effing head off, he never had to deal with your bullshit, and that's how, everyone in our family, found out what, the accident really was and why it happened. My dad, secretly had a vasectomy, after I was born, after my mom lying to him about, taking birth control resulted in my birth, our family is great at communication and conflict resolution. The great question here is if you have any siblings, I was number 4, he knew she was cheating, when she got pregnant with number 5. My great aunt's husband, killed his first wife, then killed her, they lived in Puerto Rico, and he fled to NYC, so my great uncles wouldn't kill him, they found out where he was, came here, killed him, and went home. Not exactly dark, but I found out, my father wrote porn novels under a pen name to make ends meet, when I was a baby, I've been trying to find one ever since. Shame too, you might have been able to launch one of the most successful podcasts, of all time, if you had. I always thought my two older brothers got addicted to drugs, because of their own decisions, and the people they hung out with. It turns out that my dad had been feeding them pills since they were about 10 to shut them up. Years I held resentment against them, for not being good older brothers, like they should have. Only to find out that it was my father who I had praised all those years that was truly evil. Edit. Wow. Wasn't expecting all of this. Lol. Just to address some of the comments. My brothers are doing mostly fine now. Both struggled but eventually found sobriety. Luckily enough family didn't give up on them. We have a pretty good relationship now and none of us hold anything against each other. We realize that none of us are to blame for the sins of our father. Not sure where dad is. No contact for about a decade now. In contrast, mom was and still is an angel. With her showing me who to be and my dad showing me exactly who not to be. I think I turned out pretty okay. A lot of the time the cycle just continues, but my brothers and I managed to break it. I'm sorry to everyone who has gone through something similar. Thank you for sharing your stories as well. Hope everyone finds their peace someday. Love you. Why the neighbors moved. Trigger warning for violent crime. I was pretty young when this happened, so the details won't be perfect, but the story is otherwise true. I grew up in a coastal town, and we had some neighbors whom I really liked. My parents were friends with them. Their kids were roughly my age. Wonderful. We played together all the time. One day they very suddenly moved. I was a bit confused, as there had been no clue that they were going. I remember some police cars and the moving vans weeks later, but that was it. My mother told me that the kid's grandmother had become very ill. The cops came to tell the family, and they left emergently to care for her, and never came back. I was only about 5, seemed legit. Many years later, as an adult, and long since moved away from that area, my parents and I were reminiscing over our old home. I mentioned that I wondered whatever happened to them. That's when my mom told me the truth. The parents had gone out that night on a date and left the kids with a 14 year old babysitter. When they returned home, they found the sitter murdered. Someone had broken into the home and sad, then killed the sitter. My mom stated, the cops think the sitter pretended to be the only one home to protect the kids. 
When the parents got home, they checked the kids were safe and sent them back to sleep. The police obviously immediately came. Once the kids were hard asleep, the parents picked them up, put blankets over their heads, asked the cops to be silent as they walked them out and took them out of the house. They gave the kids the same story my parents told me. Grandma was sick and they were going to live with her. Grandma dutifully played along with the ruse for several weeks until the parents could find a new home to live in. The kids were kept unaware of what had happened, just mere feet from them, as they didn't want the kids to be forever terrified of it happening again. Not sure if the kids ever eventually figured out the truth of that one. That, my biological mother, used to give me heroin and Valium, as a baby and toddler, to control me, then drop me off at my grandmother's house, when she couldn't afford to share, so I'd go through withdrawals, but no one would knew what was wrong. Needless to say, I was put up for adoption to get me away from that. Not super dark or super secret, but when I had to do a project on my family tree in elementary school, one of the questions was, when did your family immigrate to America and why? For one of my great grandfathers, my grandma told me, life was very hard back in his country, and it was getting dangerous to stay there, and for a long time I thought, yeah, I can see that. It was probably hard for a teenager living in Poland with World War 1, right around the corner, and I'm sure it was, but it turns out, it's even harder and more dangerous, when you're a teenager, who has slept with a married woman, and then accidentally killed her husband, when he confronted you, I can see why, she didn't want me, to put that on my elementary school project, edit, wrong world war, I just pulled up his Ellis Island records, and he immigrated in 1912 aboard the Carpathia, in August. I knew my grandfather was a coal miner, and that he was really involved with the union, but it wasn't till after he died, that I found out, just how much of a union man he was. If something needed blowing up, or someone needed to not be breathing anymore, they called Gramps. After he died, my brother remembers some men, coming to visit Gran, and giving her a lot of envelopes. She took off for a year-long vacation in Europe. After that, edit, for all the people saying my Gramps was a great man, thank you for the kind thoughts, but seeing something you think is cool on Reddit, is not the reality. He wasn't a good husband and he wasn't a great father, to three of his daughters, although he loved my mama very much, as well as me and my brothers and cousins. Being a violent person for good reasons, does not make you a good person, it just makes you a means to an end. That my grandma didn't lose her leg to cancer, she lost it, because she got injured helping my grandpa fix the roof, and my grandpa was too cheap, to have it fixed properly, so he told the doctor, to cut it off. Then he beat the crap out of her, for life. My grandmother married her second husband entirely for money. Her daughters both liked to joke about, her intentionally giving him, a heart attack. He had heart problems, but liked to eat unhealthy food, and the rumor goes, she would put extra salt and butter on his food, until he finally kicked the bucket. Here's a dark secret I'm keeping myself, my late Phil pretty much did this to himself. My partner knows Phil stopped doing his prescribed walking, and ate lots of fast food, after Mill died. That was too obvious to hide, since we went to live with him for a while. What I kept to myself, were the multiple and open bottles of Zarelto, I found, when we were clearing out that house. Also another one I've forgotten the name of, presumably, he kept refilling the scripts, so his doctor wouldn't catch on. But then he chucked them in a drawer, and only took them when we came to visit. He died emotionally when Mill passed on. They'd been genuinely devoted to each other and she was his world. It took 16 months for his body to catch up. He had a massive stroke, and died a day or so, later. I found out when I was in my early 30s, that my mom hadn't only had 4 kids, but actually 6, but gave 2 up for adoption, before I was born. Also, I was the last baby she had with some rando, before she married my stepdad, and she had intended to give me up for adoption, as well. Silver lining? One of the babies, she gave up, contacted her a few years after I learned about this, and now I have an awesome new brother. Found out about a half-sibling later in life too, 
He's nice and I felt oddly comfortable and familiar around him immediately. It's extremely unfortunate though. The rest of my family want nothing to do with him and are mad at me for reaching out at all. I only get met with anger or non-answers when I press the issue too. My parents and sibling have all gotten really weird in the decade or so this all unfolded. There's so much going. Otherwise I don't think it's the main reason. But I feel like I'm not being told something about the situation I should know. My parents took me to Disneyland for my 7th birthday. I recall landing. Going to the park. Having a great first day or two. Then my parents had to step out and take a bunch of phone calls. They sounded very stressed. They kept telling me nothing happened and everything was okay. Eventually we flew home. And surprise. Took an extra couple days to go to a big water park away from home. I fondly remembered this birthday and eventually forgot about any of the weirdness. Maybe 10 years later. My parents finally told me what happened. My uncle. My dad's brother. Tried to kill himself on my 7th birthday. He shot himself in the stomach with a rifle. He was poor. Addicted to drugs. No work etc. He felt depressed. My dad had the life he always wanted, so tried to kill himself. He ended up living. My parents took me to the water park, so that we didn't have to come home to him, leaving the hospital. By not telling me, my parents let me keep my birthday as my day, not the day uncle tried to die. Knowing how a 7 year old's brain works, I probably would have thought I had something to do with it. My mother grew up in the American South. Her brother died in his early 20s and she always told me it was a freak accident. A bullet came through the window killing him. They lived in a rural area, so I never questioned it. One year, I inherited an old Korean war officer's sword. After my grandpa passed, my mom freaked out and told me that it was too dangerous to keep and that we should sell it or get a safe to lock it up in. I thought it was weird, so I asked my dad and he got this sad look on his face. Turns out, my mom's brother was brutally murdered with a similar sword in the 80s. He had gotten involved with some drug dealers and they thought he had snitched about one of their big deals that got busted. No idea why they decided to use a sword, but it was pretty f up to hear about. My mom had to ID the body. I found this out when I was 16, but she never directly acknowledged it until years later. My mom said he was just trying to make some extra cash by introducing people who partied to the dealers. I'm about his age now, and I can see how he just thought he was making a quick buck, never thinking something like that would get him killed. Growing up, I always knew my parents had marital issues, constant fighting, a couple times dad disappeared for a few days, living in his car, issues with drinking, but they stayed together, and when I asked, why didn't they divorce, they always said they loved each other too much. And in the past few years, things seem to have gotten better. My parents in fact are now so comfortable in their relationship that they make jokes about all the awful stuff they've done to each other in front of me. What I've managed to put together is my parents met when they were 14 and my mother was dating an 18 year old and my dad would relentlessly ask her out until she eventually dumped her boyfriend for my dad. My mother went on to university after college, we're UK, whereas my dad dropped out of college and went straight into work, while constantly drinking and partying. It was at one of these parties, while my mum was studying, that he cheated on my mum, with someone from their old secondary school, so she dumps him. Barely a year later my dad realizes, he doesn't know how to do anything for himself, no one else wants him, and he goes crawling back to my mum. She agrees to take him back, but only if he marries her, not immediately, but eventually, she said. He agrees and a short year after that, age 22 now, she's already pressuring him to propose. He fumbles it frankly, we're in Paris, but forgot the ring and proposed back in the hotel room. After they'd visited the Eiffel Tower that day, which was her dream proposal, but she says yes. A month after they're married, mum pressures him into having a child that he doesn't want. And 9 months later I was born. They soon realize how hard having a child is. And basically pawn me off. On my grandparents. For the rest of my childhood. After me. There were two more accidental babies. And each time my dad threatened to leave her. If she didn't abort them. She managed to convince him. To stay while keeping my siblings. 
by promising he wouldn't have to raise them. He didn't, but neither did she. Frankly, I did, and that is only what happened before shortly after I was born. If I carried on into my childhood, we'd be here for years. What they sold to me, as a perfect love story, been together since they were 14, proposed in Paris, soon married and had children, because of pure love, is in fact a bunch of skewered half-truths, from a horrible twisted love map, of my mother's manipulation, and my father disappointing her, time and time again. My uncle was actually my cousin. He was kidnapped, as an infant, and when he was returned, a year later, my aunt didn't want him back. My grandparents adopted him, so he was legally my uncle. My paternal grandmother had an affair with our small town's mortician in the 1940s. She got pregnant and he performed an illegal abortion. The fetus was buried behind the funeral home he owned, where we kids used to sled every winter. My dad told me this as I was getting ready to take a ride down the hill on the sled when I was 12. Also, paternal grandfather had multiple illegitimate children around our small town. Turns out one of my best friends was also my half-cousin. Father told me when I was 17. My father was educated, intelligent, honest and moral. The fact that his parents were so wild was absolutely shocking to me. When I turned 21, my grandfather told me a story about his older brother that I had never heard. My great uncle was a big boozer for most of his life. He passed at 92 and by then, had switched from liquor, to beer and wine. He also cut down to one pack of cigarettes a day, instead of two, after he had half a lung removed. Pap and my uncle grew up on a farm in the 30s and 40s. Mostly the family ran the farm by themselves, but from time to time they would hire drifters on, as farm hands. In 1950, my uncle and one of the farm hands, were out drinking, and they were driving back to the farm in my uncle's convertible. My uncle was the one driving, and he misjudged the turn that had a steep bank on the right side. He ran the car up the embankment, which was steep enough to flip it. My uncle was throw from the car, but the farm hand, he was drinking with, was only halfway out of the car when it landed. Pap said he was severed clean, into two pieces. Because the farmhand was just a drifter without any family to make much fuss and because the Korean War had just started, my uncle was able to enlist and avoid any criminal charges. He was in Korea until the end of the war. That was the only time I've ever heard that story told, and although I would never be someone who has more than a few drinks before getting behind the wheel, it's something that definitely sticks in my mind, and it's a story I'll tell my own kids when they get their license. I found out I had a sister, who had been given up for adoption. The only reason I found out was, the person who informed me no longer felt bound to secrecy, after my mom died, and the person who told me had, receipts solid enough, that I have no reason to doubt them. It also explains, why mom freaked out, when I told her, I'd done a 23andMe test. Finally I got one, from when I was age 6 to 13. My mom dated a fellow, named Murray, we all lived together in an old farmhouse. Murray was a wonderful father figure to us, but he also had a drinking and driving problem, and after a particularly nasty accident, mom waited until he came home from the hospital and was well enough to take care of himself, before leaving. The whole time we lived there, my sister and I never went down into the basement, as it was infested with spiders. I always thought it was, because of the drinking and driving she left him, but as it turns out, that was only part of it, the other being that, he had a massive grow up for we in the basement. Mum stated, had the police found out about this, she would have lost custody of us. Murray has long since passed, but he would have had a giggle, that we is legal here now. My parents had two kids before I was born. My mother drowned them in a bathtub during a psychotic episode. Somehow despite this, and a prior history of mental illness, she got released and had me. A couple years later, they had another child just before I turned two, but I never laid eyes on her. Neither of them ever fessed up, though. I only found out about their existence after an aunt died and left me her personal effects. I found birth announcements for these other kids in her momentous. I always thought she meant for me to find them. When I asked my parents, they refused to discuss anything related to these kids. A few years later, 
I went back to my hometown and looked up that date and the newspaper morgue. The friend who went with me was floored. I wasn't, really. I'd grown up in fear for my life, from her ages. I broke off contact with them as soon as I could. Not just because of this, though it didn't help. I had a slew of my own traumas growing up. It was a huge mistake to let them try to raise another child. 1. My paternal great-grandmother was owned by a wealthy cattle ranch around the turn of the last century on the Mexico-Texas border in the 1890s-1900s-ish. She didn't leave the ranch until she was 16 when she got pregnant and ran away because the baby belonged to the owner of the ranch and she thought he'd kill her if he found out. It was strange to learn that the old lady that would hold me and sing to me as a kid spent the first decade and a half of her life as property. I wasn't told any of this until after my grandmother, her daughter, passed away. My great grandmother was very ashamed of her past and I think by extension, so was my grandmother. Looking at old photos of my grandmother and her older brother, the baby she had at 16, he does look strikingly more European than my grandmother, an indigenous Mexican. 2. My maternal grandfather was a pedo and harmed my mother and her siblings. It was a well-known secret in the family, which is even more disgusting. Growing up, I used to spend the night at my dad's parents' house all the time, but I don't have a single memory of spending the night at my mom's parents' house. Never once sat on his lap. Never once did my mom ever allow him to hug us. I never understood why my mom was so cold to him. When my father was so close with his own father, I grew up resenting my mom for withholding us from a whole other set of grandparents and wished she would have told us sooner than when she finally did. I would have had more sympathy for her. My dad's side of the family has ties with the mafia. Thankfully my mom has long since divorced my dad and they life a decent distance apart. I heard stories of my mom's parents who lived close by at the time, circling the block, in their truck, late at night soon after the divorce, to ensure no one was there to hurt us. I was very young at this point, probably like 3 or 4, so I really have no memory of this. I do remember, one night, our garbage can was burned to the ground, and my mom has since told me, about death threats soon after the divorce. My mom, a couple years ago, watched a documentary, on prominent mafia families and noted multiple names that were at her wedding. When my grandma's gentleman friend was admitted into a care home for his dementia, they had a problem in verifying his medical records. As he deteriorated, he lost his Irish accent and would occasionally speak in German. He was a child during World War II. My parents reckon he was probably a Jewish escapee. This happened to my great aunt. She was a German Jew and she got Alzheimer's. She forgot her husband, then forgot she wasn't trying to escape the Nazis, then forgot how to speak English, and spoke in German thinking she was a teenager, then forgot how to speak, then died. Alzheimer's is not the best. My grandmother raised her nephew after his parents died. I don't know what I thought happened to them. Probably just assumed car accident. When I was 14 or 15, I asked my mom what happened, and she told me that it was a murderess. Then she told me way more details that I probably shouldn't have been told and told me not to say anything to him because he had blocked it out and didn't remember most of the details. Years later, we were talking and in the middle of an unrelated conversation, he said to me, I remember everything. It just came to me a few nights ago. I didn't know what to say, but then he asked if I knew the story and said I kind of did. He went into detail and it was not fun. But I could tell it was cathartic for him. Next time I talk to my mom, I let her know that he remembered and may get the same conversation. That was the last time I heard anything about his parents, though. My grandfather had severely scarred legs from burns he got as a kid. Growing up, we were told that he was in a fire in an apartment building and sustained the burns while escaping. He died when I was 7 and one of my few memories of him is an image of those scarred legs. Well, when I was 23, my great aunt, his sister, told me that it wasn't a fire. Their father ran a bath with scalding water and put my grandfather in it as a punishment. Great grandfather was an abusive alcoholic piece of shit 
who effing maimed his son. My father is from small working town in eastern Ukraine, and most of our lives we've been poor, but my mother always praised my father, for his ability to know the perfume by smell, and not only that but also he can recognize many famous perfumes by smelling them. Once, when I was 20 something years I asked, why is that so? Where he obtained this skill? My father asked me, to not ever tell this story, to my mother. And here's the story, my father had a close friend who was actually a secret lover of one of the most famous Soviet singers, who officially had wife. But in reality, he was gay and did a lot for gay community in Soviet Union. He brought a lot of expensive things from abroad, like new music, clothes and perfumes. And a lot of that perfumes has been met at secret parties. This gay friend of my father, also gave him all the fresh music releases vinyl. And he sold it and they shared the profit, unofficially of course. That's why my dad knows release years of most hits from 60s and 70s. And more of that, he told me about Special Square in Sochi, the place of Olympic Games 2014, where gays of USSR met each other and what secret signals they had. Nice, UPD, I was probably misunderstood. That secret gay friend of my father was the only gay my father knew. All info about gays of USSR, he know from that friend. Parties, that I mentioned above, were not for gays, they were just normal parties for counterculture youth. Gayness of his friend was a secret, everybody on this parties was wondering where did he gets all this goodies rare in USSR, but he never answered. My father was allowed to know, only because he knew that friend from childhood. They were like relatives. Okay, even if my dad had some gay experience, it's fun to know, lol. Wild's story is a wild, mine is super tame. When I was in my early 20s, I found an old photo of someone in a family album, I didn't recognize. When I asked my mom about it, she said, oh that's your aunt Gloria, then she lowered her voice, even though we were alone, and added, she's a nudist. Poor Aunt Gloria, just wants to be a nudie lady, and everyone acts, like she's a leper. 